keeps popping into my head is um, when I think of honey and spicy is like a hot honey on like a, like a fried chicken sandwich. So what Ooh. if you were to take the mushroom, turn that into some kind of patty, fried, fry Ooh. that, and then put the hot honey on, and then put yes. that on a bun. Yes, a chicken fried mushroom! Like on a nice squishy potato bun, but these ingredients all kind of work harmoniously together. And that's kind of the realization that you have to have in the kitchen. Most things actually might go together. I'm a fan of a galette that doesn't have a perfect shape. I like folding over those uneven edges. Yes, if anybody doesn't know what a galette is, it's basically a pie where you make the dough, you put berries or whatever good apples in the middle, and then you just like literally you put it on a baking sheet and you fold over the edges of the pie dough. So it's like a kind of like, oh no. Dumpling yes. sort of thing. <laughs> yes, galette is like, it's awesome. It's the way to go. Why without the tin? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Let's talk about the foods that you kind of grown up with. Um, and I think there's one that we have in common, which is rice. Have you heard about this miracle grain? Have you heard about this? Have you heard <laughs> about the king of all grains right here? Rice, the single template, like mm -hmm. right here. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I guess obviously being, being Latino, uh, being Ecuadorian, um, just rice has been a part of part of my life maybe they don't have that lens of like the potential of every ingredient in the house yet so like mm -hmm. how do we jump start that or how do we get inspired to, to pick something <laughs> i think a key thing is not so much about the ingredients but learning about how to achieve a particular craving mm. with seasoning um yes. because so like what makes the salty thing what makes the sour thing if you don't have the lemon what could you use if you don't have the crunch what else do you have so yes. just like what what textures and seasonings do you really want in that snack and then what kind of do you want the snack to be related to and then what do you have that can make up that fantasy i think yeah. that's a great prompt for a lot of people here Really great brisket is usually very um, moist and has um, a little bit of a pink smoke ring on the outside. Really, if you wanna get the most out of your brisket, it should be thick slices of brisket. Thinly sliced brisket, unfortunately, which is where I grew up with, um, in Kansas City, Missouri, is thinly sliced brisket and it just, it, it dries out so It fast. dries out so quickly, yes. And it's this, brisket is such a difficult piece of meat to cook. You've got to spend 16 hours, 18 hours, 20 hours yeah. cooking a brisket to get it right. So it's almost like you need to serve it quickly. If anyone ever says, hey, would you like me to pre-slice your brisket? No, absolutely no. not. I'll slice it myself. I'll warm it up and slice it up because letting all those juices out, all that moisture out, I think it just really, it just damages it so where it's it, it loses a lot of flavor yeah and that the, all that fatty goodness he documented oh oh hey everybody how's it going uh welcome back to attack the pantry i am jen de la vega this stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself uh, during the ongoing outdoor situation and for, to be honest, the rest of your adult life. Uh, last time on the show, we had a cook-along. We made some buncha, 
and uh who else did we have we had dylan and aram here on the on the show uh to talk about kill every monster which is a podcast um and who else (laughs) <laughs> I'm totally just blanking on who else we had on the street. I apologize. I will say your name at the end of the end of the show. But anyway, you can watch all the best clips here on my channel if you click on videos and the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. Make sure to subscribe there. Um, so some business first before we get started. Uh, I'm a Twitch affiliate. Hey. Um, that means uh, with every subscription to my Twitch channel, I get a little bit of pocket change to make the show better every month. Uh, one way around that is uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can gift your subscription for free to your favorite creators every month. So if you have one, click on that purple button that says uh, gift a sub and you can get a little crown next to your name in the chat. Otherwise, I'm happy to take your money dollars, your well-earned money dollars uh, to, <laughs> to keep this ship afloat. Um, There are lots of really good links to get to know me if you click on the About tab below the video. Um, But let's get this show started, right? Um, I have a really exciting guest. Um, Please welcome my friend, Abby. Hello. So excited to be here. (laughs) How you doing? I'm good. I realize I'm like sitting in a very like Filipino way where it's just like you're kind of like cross like in general. Um, it's all good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm so, so hyped. Um, and thank you for having me on. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to talk to you about your book. But first, can you just like briefly introduce yourself to people who don't know you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm Abby. Um, I'm a baker based here in Brooklyn. Um, I have my first cookbook coming out actually this month on the 28th. It's called Mayumu Filipino American Desserts Remixed. Um, And yeah, I'm just like a friend of Jen's first and foremost. Um, And secondly, I'm just like a really excited just like, I don't know, like baker, lover of food, also a person who works in music. So I have a lot of aspects going on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, And we probably would have run into each other no matter what, I feel like, in Brooklyn. Um, uh, So how do we know each other? We know each other mostly from Twitter, I think. But you were really proactive about organizing dinners with fellow Filipinx people who are in our realm of uh, food and entertainment, which is really cool. Yeah. well, I don't remember when is the first time we met. I was it two years ago or a year ago? I don't even I, know. I feel like that is so hard to say. How, I know when we exactly <laughs> met, just because I've seen you so much online that I'm like, oh yeah, like we definitely hung out. I don't know virtually. So <laughs> I Me? Feel... online. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, yeah, no, it's been nice to actually like hang out. Like, and we've like since then worked together on like a shoot before. So. That's it's, right. It's a great progression of our friendship slash like, I don't know, like food family thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to pull that up uh, so we can show everybody uh, what we did. Because yeah. it was a really great collaboration that I did not foresee happening. <laughs> like... No, exactly. It's It was for the kitchen this past October. Um, I was the guest editor for Filipino American History Month and pretty much took the opportunity to talk all about like Filipino breakfast and salogs um, and just like. I know Jen, Jen did amazing work. You did amazing work with like basically styling it. Um, and we had an amazing team. Oh, it was so fun. It was fun. It was a good time. So obviously we really, could talk really about cool. that more, but it was good. Yeah. It was oh, shout out to Kim of the internet. Kim, <gasps> Omsom Kim! represent. Kim's in the chat. Welcome. Oh my God. Hi, Kim. Glad to see you here. Ah! Okay, um <laughs> yeah we're we can geek out about omsom as well i know cause... i love i love you. i love you kim i love all y'all's work that you do i literally every time i go to like an omsom party it's like the best night of my life <laughs> oh that's when you got your tooth gem right yeah like, way back yeah yeah I i'm like where where else am i gonna get a tooth gem at a party but like at an omsom party honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in one of their like ads, like ad campaigns a oh while back. That was just exciting. Um, okay, wholesome. I know, so wholesome. Good collab- <laughs> collabos. So many yes. collabos. Um, 
But uh, so we're going to go on to our first segment of the show, which is a <laughs> show and tell. So everybody who's watching this for the first time or if you're watching on the VOD later, um, you can still participate next week. So if you have cooking photos that you are proud of, uh, you can send them in and we're going to do show and tell. I bring them up on the screen and we cheerlead for you because it's great. We love to see people cooking. Yeah. Um, alternatively, if you see something at the grocery store or uh, farmer's market or whatever, and you don't know how to cook with it, take a picture and send it over also uh, so that we can talk about it, uh, answer questions about you know, these things that you don't recognize at the grocery store. <laughs> um, but let's get started here. We just have a few this week. What's new? Ooh, I wish Ooh. I had like, I wish I had like a echo. <laughs> I'll do it. A soundboard. soundboard. <laughs> yeah. That's if I get more subs, uh, subs on this channel, you know, that'll be ultimate goal to have like a audio uh, engineer person. If you had a Foley artist for your stream, that'd be sick. <laughs> I would want like, you know, late night talk show style, like somebody doing the music live. That'd yeah. be so sick. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. Um, some news from me here. We have a new episode of Culinary Word of the Day. Um, I have a pod another podcast where um, it's literally Culinary Word of the Day. But we also have a behind-the-scenes chat called Echelente, which is a play on the Ninja Turtles, Excelente. Ah. But Echelente means edible. <laughs> oh. I learned something new today. Yeah. Um, we have an episode where we uh, talk about the last three words that we defined. And we're also uh, soliciting feedback. So if y'all have listened to any of the show and learned something new about cooking, we will read your feedback on the next episode. So check that out. It's available anywhere. Podcasts are uploaded. So Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. Hey, a few bad dudes. Thank you for subscribing for 18 months in a row. Bless. <laughs> Um, this week on Patreon, we have a recipe for ham hock and lentil soup. This is one of those fridge cleanouts uh, <laughs> from me, but you know, always something to learn from cleaning out the fridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at Wonderville, this is the bar that I uh, do the hot dogs at. We have a new hot dog called Mustard Combat. Uh, this is pickled mustard green and white onion. Uh, and it's available behind the bar. I'll be there tonight, actually, uh, re-upping the stock. It's going to be fun. So folks live in Bushwick or Ridgewood, come on by. Uh, we also have a shop here on Twitch. So if you want to scroll down to the About page, you can click to get the Pixel Egg emotes or the swag. Look at that swag. I got a, a egg yolk yellow anorak that has embroidery embroidered egg on the, the chest Ooh. it's so cute i love it so much anyway that's enough about me um this is from steven aka flomaine I made a salmon filet with salt pepper thyme and a butter finish yum yo wow. abby when's the last time you had salmon i don't even know it's me <laughs> i want this though i'm so hungry i can see that pool of butter at the bottom of the pan i'm like yo i'm sure there's also off-screen rice yeah i hope I just, we gotta have off-screen off rice it stresses me out when there's like no rice but i know i should I know. unlearn that i don't know <laughs> No, no, I don't think we should unlearn <laughs> unlearn rice. No way. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, my instinct is rice first. Always. <laughs> like, I can't not. I know. What is your favorite rice? My favorite rice is jasmine rice. Jasmine. <laughs> classic. Jasmine is very good and perfumey and classic. Yeah. I've I've mostly been making the sweet sticky rice lately. Oh, nice. That's fun. It's because we can also wrap it in banana leaves and steam that further, so that Ooh. like takes on that flavor. So that's been really fun for me. Yeah. Um, but it also can just like, I don't know. Rice is so versatile. It yeah. can become pudding. It can be rice balls. It can be arroscaldo. True. <laughs> so true. And like frying red rice, because I feel like you always sometimes when I was living with my parents or like as a family would make so much rice. Yes. But like living alone now or like alone with roommates, but cooking for myself, I feel like I only have like small portions and yeah. it's good to kind of like not let that a lot of rice sit because it just, you know, unless you're frying it the next day, it's hard it to ferments. Keep. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's got good. a lot of moisture. Yeah. Did, did your family have the, um, 
the push button rice dispenser. Oh yeah, the one oh, that you could like God. put a pedal and kind of like I don't know, you could like click which one, like one, two. I it, it's very distinct in my memory having. That. Yeah, we also had that one, and you could just throw a whole twenty-five pound pack of rice in there. Yeah, it just lasts for months. Yeah, no, I we are very pro that and rice cooker because <laughs> I don't, I've never really learned um, after the fact to like make rice on the stove top. I feel like I'm more used to making it at least jasmine rice in the rice cooker. Same. That's all. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to try anything else. That's, that works for me. <laughs> You're funny. I also was like this when I first moved to New York. I was like, I only know how to make eight cups of rice. Cause <laughs> so much rice. It was just like me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. And then always a rotating coterie of my grandpa or my grandma or my yeah. aunts and my uncle, my cousins. Like there's always somebody stopping by my house. So True. we're always making tons of rice. <laughs> And somehow it all gets eaten, which I am always yeah. amazed that there's it just there's actually not that much left over for making that much rice. Yeah, it's like, oh, somebody has to make more rice. Oh, oh, oh no. every day, every day. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for sending in your salmon. You're making us crazy. Yeah, we we're it. hungry, hungry, <laughs> <laughs> hangry. Um, this one is from Michael D. So uh, this is chile con carne. Yeah. Um, instead of only using ancho chili, I used half ancho, half cascabel. It's a smoky, slow burn that goes great with the meat. Ooh. Oh, oh! I hope there are Fritos off camera. <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm a huge fan of the Frito pie, so I just yeah. hope there's some Fritos or a cornbread. <laughs> That looks so good. That looks like an East East Fork pottery bowl to me, too. Oh, my eyes. My eyes don't deceive me. <laughs> I'm not familiar with East Fork, actually. Oh my god, Jen. I love East Fork. I feel like it's very much like every single, like the really aesthetic pottery bowls. Oh, like, sponsor us. I know. I'm like, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's, who knows? I'm just guessing from my eyes. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so cute. Um, but Michael, it is definitely chilly weather outside i mean maybe not in brooklyn today because it's like 60 degrees <laughs> true <laughs> but but winter is a perfect chilly time uh i have like a whole ass chapter about chili in my cookbook so uh i'm all about it i love making chili um this is from aram who is a previous guest on the show uh i believe this is mac and cheese with it looks like a bacon crumb topping oh yo look at that gooey sauce at the bottom that looks so good it looks really good oh. aram making us crazy over here uh -huh. i know it's, a <laughs> it's getting worse yeah it's a bad idea to hang out with me on twitch without eating or having a snack i nearby. know i wasn't warned jen i would have <laughs> brought sorry. some snacks or i'm something. sorry i need to put it in my my uh my solicitation email when I tell guests to be like, oh, by the way, you should eat something or bring a sack. It's true. <laughs> so true. Um, this week for me, my my grocery store started carrying these Iberica spirit chips. Uh, folks, if you've been watching the show, I'm a huge fan of a strange chip or like alternative flavor chips. This was chorizo flavor and it's so good. <laughs> Wow, that looks so yum. I've never seen this brand before. I know. It's from the um, Sea Town on Graham. Oh. So these are thick, thick, thick cut. So they're sturdy if you have like a dip or something. Mm -hmm. um, but the flavor is incredible. Like it is indeed smoky and wow. a little, little porky. But I have a, a few other flavors that I bought as well. So we'll oh. show and tell those another day. Oh. <laughs> I, I know <laughs> abby what is your favorite potato chip flavor oh my god this is like not necessarily my favorite favor but what you said about quirky flavors remind me of like in 2017 there was like you know like kettle chip brand the, uh -huh. like, the classic ones they had um like moscow mule flavored chip which was what? like gingery and limey and i really liked it but i just think some people don't like love that idea but i was a fan so if they ever no, bring that back if that you sounds ever good it, it was so good i bought like 10 bags of that <laughs> i probably like sold them out and they never made them again but oh knows? shoot <laughs> um on the right we have some ribs that i made the other night i have this spice mix that i've been um 
trying to get through. <laughs> like, I made it for a wedding. Uh, we made ropa vieja, which is like a pulled beef dish for a wedding in LA. Um, but I made too much of the, the dry rub, so I've been trying to use it up. Uh, it's like a mix of coriander and cumin and paprika. Um, what else? I have some pulverized bay leaf in there. This sauce was um, tomato paste and the juices from the ribs uh, when I was slow cooking it. And it turned out great. I was very happy with it. Oh my god. <laughs> salivating <laughs> i know i this is a problem it's a problem uh we also had the valentine's day uh pancakes i've got some some banana uh compote on top with some brandy and cinnamon mm -hmm. yeah and then a uh, valentine's gift from my friend kate she brought back bagels from montreal <gasps> wait yo that's yo crazy. bagels from montreal are so good <laughs> Wait, what's the difference again? Like the main difference from like New York to like Montreal bagels? They're smaller mm -hmm. um, and chewier. You can see that they're much thinner mm -hmm. and it has like a bigger hole, like uh. this big of a hole. So it's more of like a ring, uh -huh. more so than the, the closed bagel that we get. Um, so it's not pillowy, it's like more chewy. Oh, it's really good. Is that the same as Bialy? No, no, no. Because Bialy is closed. Closed. And okay. it has the sautéed onion on the inside. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I, I'm learning. I'm learning. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. This is what the show, the show is all about learning. Yeah. It's all good. Um, all right. I think that's the end of show and tell here. Uh, let's get into Mayumo. Oh, my God. Abby. Yes. <laughs> Exciting. What does Mayumu mean? So Mayumu, it means sweet in Kampampangan. Um, there are many, many languages in the Philippines, but my parents are from Pampanga and there they speak Kampampangan. So I wanted to, you know, name it in honor of them. But That's uh, so cute. Yeah, it's so I love I love the name. It's so nice seeing like Kampampangan words on like a shelf uh, yeah. theoretically soon and everything. So here's the book cover. This hey. is very, very cool. My mom is from uh, Pangasinan as well. Oh, Pangasinan. Oh, oh, oh also, yeah, my oh, parents, yeah, different, different, different problem. area, different area, different area, but you know, P, the P, the P, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I got no. the P messed up, it's but okay. um, I think what people don't know is that there are many dialects in the Philippines, mm -hmm. so like most people think it's just Tagalog. But that's not true. Like, yeah. there's so many. <laughs> yeah. And I know a lot of people, you know, who aren't Kampapanga were confused. They're like, what does this even mean? And it's like, Matamis is Tagalog for sweet, I think. Um, I'm not sure what it is in Pangasinan, Pang 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 but. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, honestly, <laughs> exactly. I think there's a lot we can all learn from each other. <laughs> that's another book. <laughs> another one. Can, someone else can make that. Version. Someone else can make that cookbook. <laughs> Um, so this is a gorgeous cover. Um, I love that you're really leaning into the lime green. Yes. <laughs> Usually my hair can match, but like right now it's like blue. But uh, but no, I love color and I'm my Avi. I'm Avi. I mean, yeah, Avi, but um, it, I think it's really striking and I'm really glad um, that Mumtaz, who like created like the book design um, on my team, just really understood that like I really wanted something fun and playful and like the font was very much everything was like I feel like you understand this so well but like oh, yeah. you think about every single detail about like the cover because it's like the most important picture of the book um, but in the actual photo when this was taken like this, the background was a little bit more gray so they mm. wiped it out and like made it more bright and I think it makes everything pop a lot better yeah um, so yeah I'm really I love what they did here it's a hollow hollow baked Alaska slice um, I was gonna ask you that yeah. what is that yeah hollow hollow baked Alaska yes. okay let's Let's break that down a little bit more for people who don't know what those different things are. Yeah, yeah, no, it's so, good. So start with the baked Alaska. Yes, the baked Alaska. So if you never had one, it's infamous on a Great British Bake Show for being like super stressful in the tent because it's like an ice cream dessert. Um, it's layered usually with cake or something on the bottom um, and then ice cream. And then the cover of the whole thing is like covered in like a meringue topping usually. Um, so then you torch that or you put it in like an oven or whatever you need to like brown the top and then you serve it just like, you know, blah, 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 blah to people. <laughs> <laughs> you cut it up and you serve it. Um, but holo holo is like a famous Filipino dessert that's like shaved ice, um, evaporated milk, lots of red beans, jellies, yeah, yeah. like ice cream. And so it's really known for just like a very refreshing kind of 
mix mix of everything. Um, and so combining those concept uh, concepts, I wanted to do like a coconut sponge. Um, and then the ice cream is in, in this shot. I did not make this ice cream. It was Magnolia ice cream. Oh, sure. So it was like ube and mango. Um, and then the actual, like there's a very tiny portion of like white underneath like the purple um, ice cream, ube ice cream is uh, like a granita. Oh, um, so it's wow. an evaporated milk granita, like infused with like jackfruit. Basically. There's so many dark. There's so many. This. this is like the most complicated <laughs> recipe in the book, I have to say. Um, so then, like that is also just like they have like bits of the jellies of like a hollow hollow mix oh you get gosh. from a, j a jar um, inside, and then it's like in the whole like uh, Swiss meringue or Swiss, I guess yeah, Swiss meringue topping, and that's torched. Um, wow. But yeah, my food stylist Katie Wayne did an amazing job because I was scared to do this on set to be honest I know <laughs> I'm the author I know I've made this before but like to you know it was very nerve-wracking because it's basically like this it's is the showstopper show yeah. yeah I was like oh my god and so yeah I'm really obsessed with like how she put like um fresh flowers edible flowers so oh my god it's, it's really gorgeous. more beautiful than I thought it would turn out even in my <laughs> kitchen like this is much better than anything I've done <laughs> Wow. Okay. Also, um, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. we got raided. Do you know what that means? Right. What does that mean? That means on Twitch, when someone's show ends, they um, can send their audience to another show. And so Yay. we just got raided by Dandy in the Bronx. Hey. Hey. Thank you so Diego. much. Diego. Wow. Yes. That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Well, that's like yeah. a really uh, like good thing for something that kind of sounds scary. Like you got raided. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what's happening? It's very aggressive language. Yeah. It's yeah. like from gamer culture. But okay. Um, okay. so my friend Dandy in the Bronx, Diego is a... Um, a fashion blogger, influencer, and also Pokemon master. So his stream is uh, really, really fun. So not only is he dressed to the nines, he's um, also inviting people to do Pokemon battles and raids on his channel. So everybody gets to play. Um, it's super cute. You get to see what Diego's catching. And I don't know. He has a lot of really good advice about how to dress yourself. Because even I don't know how to do that sometimes. <laughs> no, this, he sounds like a renaissance man. I want to yes! meet you. That is so cool. What the heck? <laughs> Wait, I think I actually have a... Um, quick commercial if you don't mind oh, okay. from Diego so uh, we'll take a 20 second break check this out hello attack the pantry chat this is Diego Dandy in the Bronx your local menswear blogger and twitch streamer you can find me at twitch.tv slash dandy in the Bronx and I go live every Monday Wednesday Friday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time I play mostly Pokemon but other stuff as well so hopefully see you there isn't that fancy? Oh my god. Okay, I just have to <laughs> get my like half of my body game up because I go on Zoom every day and I don't think it really exemplifies my sense of style enough. So <laughs> next time I will do better. <laughs> oh, it's hard to keep up with Diego. Is so it? Oh, <laughs> a three piece. Like that's, that's hard to do. I can't even tie a tie. So hopefully he can help me with that. He will teach know. you. His Instagram is full of those kinds of videos. It's amazing. Oh my god. Wow. Um but thanks for the raid, Diego. Always appreciate it. Love meeting new people. Um, thank you, Lillian, for following. Fake Santa Claus for following. Russ, I saw you showing some eggs in the chat earlier. Thanks so much. Um, on this channel, if you subscribe, you get little egg emotes uh, that you can use in the chat. So sometimes when we are excited about stuff, we'll be like, eggs in the chat. And then you can just oh. share your eggs over and over again. That's cute. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so we're gonna give you a big old thank you. <laughs> oh my god. I know, we got all these special effects now. So fancy. <laughs> so fancy. Wow, so many new followers. Uh, Andre and Darian, thank you so much. Uh, nice to meet you all. Um, this is my friend Abby. Uh, we are talking about her cookbook that is coming out. Is it next week already? It's two weeks, basically. Two weeks Less than two okay. weeks, yeah. Right. And so you were just talking about this beautiful cover. I mm -hmm. love that there's banana leaf, like yes. really represent. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's really, I, I'm excited for you to see like the full thing because when it before it was cut open, um, it's like on a cake stand and there's like a little Filipino flag toothpick oh my God. on the top. So it is really a beautiful, it's like, uh, it's one of my favorite recipes in the book for sure. 
Awesome. Yeah. And if y'all couldn't tell, we're Filipino up in here. <laughs> you couldn't already see. If you couldn't tell. Um, we love food. And I am so excited for this book because it is so different from a lot of the Filipino American cookbooks that are out already. Um, so, you know, I didn't really categorize my cookbook as Filipino American, but you very well could. You know, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I I have like like lots of influences in my cookbook, but they're not like outwardly Filipino recipes. So like they're chili, it's burgers and mm -hmm. sandwiches and salads. Um, but you can definitely see little um, little notes like fried garlic, uh, fried rice, yeah. um, lumpia or lumpia wrappers that I turn into chips. I love that. Dip, yeah, yeah, which is yeah, super fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also in that world um, is, you know, Angela's book, Philippine X. We also mm -hmm. have um, Memories of a Philippine Kitchen by Romy Dotoran. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any others on your shelf My that shelf? are, you know, yeah. influenced you in any way? Yeah, I feel like um, 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 Boy. Um, oh, yeah. Which was like a big, most one of the most recent ones I can think of was really nice. I think especially in like the memoir aspect of it and him like talking about his life was really something that I appreciated yeah um, that one is Alvin Kailan right yes Alvin yeah. Kailan yes um and I'm trying to think because there's also 7,000 islands I'm trying right to, yes yes I it's like crazy it's like so hard because like, all these covers are in my head and like <laughs> I, I I have them in my apartment somewhere but like I, it's like so many really good books like that I just feel like especially you worked on Philippine X and stuff yeah. so <laughs> I feel like that was one of the most recent ones that was really just like oh like yeah I'm, I'm very much inspired by like the aesthetics of this for sure because the cookbook is beautiful and the recipes yes. like speak for themselves and everything so yeah yeah lots of inspiration for sure can you talk us through your journey from starting the blog to having a cookbook I know I know it's, it's so weird it's crazy everybody's journey is different like really different so yeah. I'd love to hear you know the big swings that you took uh throughout this process <laughs> yeah, so I started my blog the dusky kitchen you can follow at the dusky kitchen oh, right um, here thank you no it's also yeah I just like all my socials everything is there um but I started in like the summer of 2020 so like heat of the pandemic right um also just like i don't know everyone had time to bake and this was something that's been on my mind because i, I was a baker before the pandemic like just at home for fun um bringing cookies to my coworkers, all that kind of stuff um but actually like blogging was something that's like very innate to me i like always was like um in college i was like i went to uc berkeley i wrote for the daily clog which is our blog hey. so shout out to them um, but when I first like graduated, I also had another blog called Hotline Bling It, um, which, <laughs> <laughs> which is like a music blog. Um, and I was kind of talking about like my favorite songs, but also talking to other, uh, basically like my favorite independent musicians who are BI, BIPOC um, and just like, hey, like, you know, like what, you know, what's your journey? How'd you get here? And that kind of led me to my current job, which was working at Bands of Town. Um, and like, it's a live music company. And so I ended up there. But Fast forward to like yes. what, what we're actually talking about is like my baking. So um, because of starting the blog, I was like, well, I kind of just want to write down what recipes I was doing and not necessarily like there were a lot more just like tweaks on other people's recipes. Um, but at the same time, it was like in in tandem with like doing pasta lubo and treat boxes. So I did dessert boxes for mutual aid orgs and I donated all the funds to them. Um, and that was a really nice way to kind of like tie in both like writing about something and also like having people be able to make the recipes even if they couldn't pick up desserts for me specifically in mm. New York. Um, and yeah, so then doing that was kind of just like posting online, just being like super open with like what I was baking. And my now agent found me through Twitter and was like, hey, are you, if you're thinking of writing a cookbook, let me know. And I'm like, well, I, you put the thought in my head, so I'll oh! let you know. <laughs> and so I really wasn't, my goal in starting a blog was not to like write a book, but it just so happened that like a lot of great, exciting things happened from chance and serendipity, but also just like baking for 13 years of my yeah. life at that point. So there's a lot of factors. You're ready. There. Yeah, I guess I was like ready. I don't even, I don't know. But like, I, I would say like, I'm really excited about like, I guess like the possibility of like, if you do stuff and you are open to sharing it with other people, yeah. people are going to be receptive to it. The right people are going to be. 
Um, and so I'm really glad that like I did that. And so that happened, like I got my signed to my literary agency, like November, I would say 2020. Oh my God. And then I started writing my proposal for the cookbook for Mayumu January through May, 2021. Um, and then basically like it was, you know, released to like editors to like look over. Um, and basically agreed upon with um, HarperCollins uh, imprint Harvest. And yeah, so basically I got signed. My actual contract came December 2021. And then actually writing recipe development and everything was January to May 2022. Right, I edits, remember. Yeah, oh yeah, this time I, I remember. Very, yeah. It was a time. So a year ago, <laughs> I was in a very different position than I am now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like even when you're done, done like writing, there's like countless edits they have to do. And like, there's look, so much more work and so much more down. work than the actual, like, it's due, the manuscript is due this day, but you're actually not really done with it till like months later. So I want to say it finally finished up like actually sent to the printers like November 2022. So wow. I know I'm like, it's very, I was like, is the book real until literally I got it in the mail this week. So I'm very excited about it. What a journey. I know, I, I feel like I had to like lay it out in like this. Cause I also like time is just like a construct that I've like in the pandemic, <laughs> it's just like flew by that I have to kind of like, oh, this happened in this time and this happened. And this is where I'm here today. <laughs> I remember when I first met you, um, we were just getting to know each other. We even went like on a dinner date to Winona's. Yeah, that was, was so cute. Time we did, but for Pata Kim's pop up. That's there. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Erica, shout out Erica. Shout out Erica. Um, but I saw a lot of my journey in your journey. Like yeah. I, al I also worked in music. <laughs> like, which is I was, so bananas I've always, i know <laughs> i know that about you but it's just so weird it's like so wild. i think there's such a natural connection to it mm -hmm. like being creative in any industry really translates um being organized on top of your shit like, <laughs> sure. like it was it's not a difficult leap to go from the music industry to the culinary industry mm -hmm. Because I don't know, I just think there is something special about loving a song and then also loving food. Like, yeah. there's a lot of crossover there. For Tons sure. of crossover. And I personally don't necessarily like make music or anything. I'm more of like the back end marketing person on this, <laughs> like in the industry. Um, but I still think that everyone I work with, they're all very like passionate about music in some way, shape, or yeah. form. And so it's really like you're not in it necessary for the money <laughs> you're in it. oh that is a joke but like you are in it for like the love of music a love of artists a love of community like that um, Agreed. So I agree I see that 100% translated into food as well yeah 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 mm -hmm. because it's not just um a silo you know like mm -hmm. there's a community like there are so many people that put work into making albums yeah. Very much the same way that there's a lot of people that work on cookbooks. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. a case in point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so many people went into making this book, even though yeah. my name is on the cover. Like, it, it's like your food stylist, your photographer, yeah. like everyone at the your publisher. It's like your marketing person there, your publicity person there, my editor, other editors. Like, I could shout out like a million people, but yeah, it's not enough to describe how many people made this book possible. I know. Oh my gosh. Um, can you just run through kind of the way you divided the recipes? Like, what are the chapters like? Yeah, so I kind of just like inherently divided. I made a zine before I made this book. Um, you was, did? <laughs> I did, I did. So my biggest, my my one thing from my resume for this book on the proposal was my zine that I made. That's with so my, cute. I know, so it was called Matamis, which was kind of what we talked about earlier, sweet in Tagalog. Um, but I kind of was like mini little like, it was basically like, okay, Stockton, where I live, San Jose, where I live, New York, where I live. Like, it's kind of divided similarly um, in my cookbook, kind of just like where I've grown up and where I am as an adult. Um, and the recipes themselves are just like, there's still like some traditional format of like brownies and bars and cookies. Oh, sure. But there's like a con and recipe, like whole chapter, which I'm really excited about. Um, just because like, I think that's like a biggest... One of the biggest things I think about when I think about Filipino desserts specifically, just like puto and babinka and like all those like rice based like desserts and peachy peachy, which is like cassava, I guess, based. But like there's so many of those desserts that I think um, it's exciting to, to see a chapter like that, but also make a chapter like that. Um, 
which I don't no normally see very often. No, you water. don't. No, yeah. So, so let's let's rewind for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two words that you mentioned in the stream so far that I don't yeah. think people know. Yeah. So pasolobong is one. Yes. And the other one, kakanin. So mm -hmm. can you can you rewind? <laughs> yeah, no, no. So pasolobong, um, so that's how what I call my boxes. But basically, like, it's like, I usually just say souvenir just to make yeah. it short. <laughs> but like the actual like meaning of it is like, you know, when you go, usually in Filipino families, like you go and you travel, you make sure to like bring back like gifts and stuff from where you traveled from back to your family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I consider. And a lot of times possible Lubang, especially when it's like from family, is usually food. Yes. Um, it's always like just little like candies or like little treats. And so that's what I kind of thought about for my treat boxes. Um, and secondly, like um, Kakanin uh, is kind of like, basically like a Filipino umbrella of just like rice snacks slash merienda treats. Um, and it's calmly served just like or like, I guess like midday, I don't know. Like you would just like give kakana at any time really. Cause it's like, you have puto sometimes as a side, which is like a rice, a steamed rice cake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you'd mm -hmm. have it and there's different varieties of it. But like what I know most is like, you have a party, you have puto on the side and you can eat it kind of like as a place of like, like you think about like, I guess like dip, like you would eat savory food and that's a side palate cleanser right. slash you eat it together. If that makes sense. Like a, yeah. it's like a mound of, ri of rice cakes that you would just eat. I would just stuff my face with them as a kid yeah. at every party. You I don't even need them. to eat it with anything, really. You don't need like, to put anything on it. Yeah, yeah, anything that you want. And, like, some of them are such different textures based on, like, what you're using as, like, the main, like, flour. Or, like, not flour, but, like, it could be rice flour or you could actually, like, um, I think some people, like, you know, like, uh, glutinous rice flour has yeah. like, a chewier consistency. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on, like, what you're doing. Because I'm kind of more used to, like, the cakier version. So, like... I think Goldilocks is like always my oh point my God, of Goldilocks. Time. So I would just like eat those like all by themselves. How many people in the chat have been to Goldilocks or know what Goldilocks is? I would love to hear this. Um, but also backing up, merienda is basically mm -hmm. midday snack. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually in an anime. <laughs> really? Which in, anime was talking in about? In One Piece. <laughs> oh my god, wow. Shout out I, representation. Matters. I know, right? <laughs> There's a character who has merienda every day that cannot be interrupted. And so he he builds, he's, he has a power where he can make mochi. <gasps> so he, he makes a little house where he has his snack time. Oh and god. he just like relaxes and has donuts Wait. during his merienda. <laughs> I love that, honestly. I know. <laughs> and it, I do feel like there's a certain sense of like, I guess like Filipino culture that it's like, there's a lot of like sitting around and talking yes. eating, and eating at the same time. Um, like 11 Z's, I guess I would compare it to, but like, I don't know. We just love like chilling and eating together. Like yeah. if I wasn't like here in Brooklyn, like grinding or whatever, I would be like chilling with my family and talking and yeah talking and literally just like eating merienda together but yeah. like you know it is what it is <laughs> i've written in an article that uh, my family is like they eat with hobbit like intensity yes it is very <laughs> like i would say like it's just like it's 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 almost always there so you take it for granted but like it, it, it doesn't feel right if there isn't constantly like food on the table yeah. of some sort. Like there has to be something. Like something. Yeah. <laughs> I love like the ones that you'll see at my house are adobang mani, which is the fried peanut with Ooh. garlic chips. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, or you'll see lots of mini bananas. <laughs> yeah, the mini bananas. Little mini bananas. Mm -hmm. um, star apple. Uh, I think it's called ka Kaimixto is what it's oh. called. I forget what, what the actual spelling is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, lots of fruit in my family and lots of pandesal. Like the, yeah. the mini, mini pandesal, oh. which are like, kind of like dinner rolls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not the sandwich size, but like tiny, tiny this big. Yeah, yeah. Love no, it. I get you. I also feel like I'd add like Chow Pao to the list for my Ooh, family. Like Chow King, Chow Pao, just oh there. <laughs> Uh, for folks who don't know what shao pao is, it's a steam bun, basically. Or you might know it as chao su bao. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite shao pao filling? Oh, it's like uh, asado or whatever. Like, I feel like it's like the pork asado. The stewed one. meat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it has like the nice like sweet soy sauce that goes with it. Oh, I love God. that one. I yeah. love a roast pork. But I also love, I, I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's meatball with a quail egg inside. Oh, so what like, is that called? Like bola, I don't, bola bola? 
bola bola, bola for the meatball, okay. but I don't yeah. know what the egg one is called. So there's like a tiny quail egg and then meatball around it and then a steam bun outside oh of that. Oh my god, that sounds so good. <laughs> so good. I'm getting oh my god. Hungrier and hungrier. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um so you've mentioned that you you moved when you were little, like, but mm -hmm. you're mostly from California, and so yes. am I. Yes, <laughs> um, different parts, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so, what role has your family played in this whole cookbook effort? I'm sure you were calling people. Right? I, I, know, I was calling people. I think what's kind of unique about, I guess, like my process in general was like. My family, like they, like in my best interest, I really wish everyone wrote down recipes <laughs> um, and did not. So like, I feel like I was really like begging for like quantifiable measurements for my parents. Like there's luckily like a leche flan recipe. That's like my dad's recipe, but it's also like chai leche flan. So I asked my friend, Ooh. Megan's nani, her um, grandma to like send in like her chai recipe awesome. um to incorporate it in um and my mom also has her maha blanca recipe so it's like a corn pudding a coconut and corn pudding but i put like um like a frito toffee crunch on top Dude, of it what? So i know we just talk about fritos but i did that part so my mom obviously didn't do that aspect of it but it's also malted milk that i added to the Yum. her mom so i i definitely am like grateful for them um but in terms of like most of the recipes are from me but sure like, I'm glad to have talked to them kind of like because i think the most exciting part about writing the cookbook was also the opportunity to like talk about my family history and my life so i really was you know it was kind of an excuse to be like asking them all these questions about yeah migrate to the america when did you do this or like what is your favorite food i think it's hard to do that organically with parents like yeah just, hey how was your time in college <laughs> How was the war? No, I don't. <laughs> say shit like that. Like you no, can, you can. So I really think the, the cookbook was a great vessel for like being able to like record these kinds of conversations. And it's not necessarily like you know all the short our stories are pretty short, but like I still think it's something to like ask your parents like you know all these <laughs> questions that I think as a kid or like even as a teen, I feel like I never really I took for granted because I kind of knew the outline of things like I knew you came here when in like the or like early 90s, late 80s, whatever. It's just different when you're actually like, I need to write down dates for accuracy. <laughs> I think that's so amazing. And you really hit on something that a lot of folks who are writing about what we're writing about mm -hmm. right now, like this specific first generation Philippine X thing mm -hmm. where it's mostly oral tradition. Yeah. There there we didn't have the recipe box. Like we did we didn't do recipe cards. And I always find it fascinating. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, you're fine. Um <clears throat> oh, oh. Oh, no. I'm sorry, I'm I'm asthmatic. <laughs> no, you need water. If you need water, we'll no, take it. I have <laughs> I have my inhaler. Hold on. Oh god. Sorry, dork break. Oh, no. Like, it's like chocolate <laughs> rain when you move away from the mic to breathe. But you actually do need to breathe. Um. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, it's a it's a difficulty right now for a lot of us first generation writers mm -hmm. because our folks didn't write stuff down like that. No. But I love that uh, we're starting to figure out ways to do it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I always encourage people, if you're going to talk to your elders, especially if they're up there, if they're, like, really old, like, they're in the 90s, they're centigenarians, yeah. you know, you want to record those. Mm -hmm. you, so, A, so you have the memories, and B, so that you can reference something back. It's so helpful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, Jen, but I feel this, because, like, it's hard, because my parents and my even my grandparents when they were still alive they would speak in Kapampangan um and you know for me I'm like I can I can understand and I can like get by like I understand Tagalog colloquially mm -hmm. too um but it's like I think it was hard to have like meaningful back and forth conversation with like this type of language barrier where it was kind of like a halfway understanding from both parties sometimes yeah, um, yeah. and so I think audio recording is so important because there's so many tools nowadays. If you were stuck, you can obviously translate that. Oh my too. gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So um let's go back to the, the, the West Coast life. 
So yeah. you went to Berkeley. I went to Davis. So we're, go. you know, UC system. <laughs> go Aggies. Go Aggies. Go Bears. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> um, but I love this combination of cities that you have, like, in your brain because mm -hmm. mine is different. And yeah. I think that's really important for people to know and for people to feel inspired by because my story growing up and my collection of recipes is completely different from yours, which yeah. is so cool. Yeah, it's so cool. And it, yeah, the point of references are so, so different just because I grew up in like, I guess, Bay Area, Central mm -hmm. Valley. Mm -hmm. You grew up in SoCal. Yeah, um, like partial northern california but then yeah went down to socal so yeah yeah so i mean i i don't know like i do feel like there's a lot there where it's nice to like you know also currently living in new york there's so much diversity um and i, t I think i talk about that a lot just like in the book just because the inspiration is not just for me and my family it's like yeah my friends that i ate at their houses and also at restaurants that i get to go to so there's a wealth yeah. of information and a wealth of things to tap into when you're making a cookbook i think yeah, yeah. It's it's so surprising to to see what you have in the back of your head. Yeah. Like the the really um I don't know, insightful and lovely things that you revisit as you're digging around like trying to fill a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're literally just like how many things can I write? <laughs> um let's see. Are there any I don't know. I know that Kakanen was like a really unique part of the book. Is there anything else that you wouldn't find in a, another baking book? Yeah. I Do you think, have other guides and stuff? There's a big thing where I, I wrote and developed this book in my Brooklyn kitchen that I share at the time with three other roommates. And so there is like a whole portion on like tiny kitchen essentials. <gasps> oh, and I know we all <laughs> relate to that. Um, yes. But you know, even if it wasn't like you live in New York or, you know, whatever, LA, like you can also like, res like you know, if you're sharing a kitchen space, there's always tips to be able to like bake more efficiently, optimize yeah. your space, no matter how big your space really is, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I have that and also like, I'm excited about like the intro chapters, kind of like jam, syrups, and toppings. Um, but there's some like really big cornerstones of like Filipino desserts are like ube halia, um, latik, which I, I am a big fan of latik. Uh, it's like toasted coconut curds that is like a topping on a lot of desserts in Kakanin. Um, and yeah, so I think it's nice to kind of have a different, everyone else would have like maybe different points of reference for it, an yeah. essential jam, syrups, and toppings chapter, but the contents are kind of different because I do have a Filipino background primarily, so. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so exciting. I cannot wait for this to hit the shelves. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm excited. Um, okay, I'm just checking on the time. Okay, we still have some time. We still have some time. Um, let's see. What do you... I mean, I know that you are having a uh, release party. Yes. What other kinds of events are you planning um, for the book? Like, what are you trying to do? Yeah, so like actually on the 28th, the day of the launch, um, there's going to be an event at You and Me Books in Chinatown. So Cute. please come by, um, I believe it's like 5.30 to 7. Um, so I'll be there signing books, saying hi. Um, also, um, I'm also like doing another pop-up event, um, the same kind of week, week of the release, but on yeah. the 5th of March, um, at Archistratus, uh, bookstore in uh, Greenpoint. Oh, yeah. So I thought I going to do something in Brooklyn, but I was so, so excited because Paige reached out to me and I just like, didn't realize, you know, like that I would even have opportunity to like do something like this where it's a little, it's going to be a little bit different. I will have baked goods there. Oh. Um, and we're like donating some funds to, uh, to the Harper Collins Strike Fund, uh, that's yeah. been ongoing on my mind. Um, but yeah, like I am stoked for that because I feel like it's hard uh, for certain bookstores to actually like, have food at the event just because it's like scale and size. And, yeah, um, you know, just like even a kitchen space. But they do have a kitchen space. Yep, Arkansas, they do. So I'm really hyped to like get in there and like to sell desserts that are from the book itself. So I'm excited about that. That's so fun. Yeah. I remember um, someone gave me advice about when my, my first book came out. Mm -hmm. They were like, be prepared to talk about this thing for the next three years. <laughs> No, I feel that. I mean, I mean <laughs> like, I feel like also because like it is such like I guess like a cultural book that it's like well, there's 
now a AAPI month and there's like Philippine American History Month and so I feel like this is going to be like an ongoing conversation yep. which I'm really glad about and I think that's like the beauty of writing a book is just like the longevity of it it's just yeah. for, it's like a forever thing it doesn't like go away because like the browse like whatever your platform disappears yeah. so yeah. it's like nice that some people will hopefully have this on their shelf for generations and stuff. I can tell you six years later I'm still talking about my books <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good. I'm not like dissuaded by that. I'm really excited about that actually. So, you know, yeah, it's super cute. My parents are actually helping ship, um, a lot of my copies because, uh, I don't know if people know this, but you get author copies, um, or you can get them at a discount, mm -hmm. uh, when you write a book. Yay. Yeah. Um, but my pandemic plan was shipping it ourselves, uh, instead of it going from Amazon. Oh. Um, so that we would get more money in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes <laughs> like a lot of sense. Like groceries. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, my parents are are being really uh, generous with their time. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> and, is really and hard to do. The books. Yeah, because <laughs> like even like packaging it and making sure the corners don't dent is so I know. hard to do. Like oh I wish god. I had like little things to like protect them, but there's not anything. That I Three. We could. Oh, does anyone <laughs> have a 3D printer that we can borrow? Oh, that would save lives, probably. Yeah. <laughs> like, 3D print these little corner thingies. Yeah. Uh, so they don't bend in the mail. <laughs> That's exactly. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, oh my gosh. But I'm I'm just so excited to grab a copy and and look through and just do you I, let's go back to the cover. Um yeah. does the typeface have a name? This typeface? That's a good question. Or did I they make it for you? Well, no, but I did. There was at, at some point we were talking about heavily, obviously, about the typeface, but it was like, um, <laughs> at first it was going to be maybe like, you know, like the Jeepney font. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That like you, the distinct Jeepney font. I can't even describe. It's like wavy a little bit. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But I definitely wanted like a lot more like character to the type typeface because it is such a fun book. Um, so I kind of, there's a lot more inspiration, I think, from like, I, I specifically was like, I love, um, Mar like, this is going to sound a little bit dorky, but whatever. Um, but Dork, I, dorks <laughs> welcome. Dorks I know. welcome. I really love, um, so there's like, you know the ride, It's a Small World at Disney. Yes. Obviously. <laughs> um, but Mary Blair was like the artist behind a lot of like that era of Disney uh, also just like such mid-century like oh, modern vibes and dude. so that's kind of like where the inspiration came for a lot of like the graphics in the book slash like more so just like the vibe I don't know like the vibe <laughs> your Disneyland ass oh my god I, know, I love I know. it like oh no no I'm really it's fine and I it's something also growing in California you go to this like especially you I would say you probably went more than I did but yeah I played was, like, in the marching band at Disneyland so see, yeah we, we all have some type of history at Disney you know so I loved I loved going as a kid and my family in Anaheim or in Chino Hills but we drove to Anaheim um, so it wasn't, it was fun. I, I, I think about that in like fond memory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, that's so cool that you have an overarching like inspiration for the book yeah. visually. That's so cool. Oh my no. gosh. Um, and speaking of, um, overarching style, uh, I wanted to share a project that we did together. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share my screen real quick for Perfect. everybody so that you can see what I'm talking about. Guess what? The versatility. Oh, it's so silog. It's still so beautiful. I love it's looking so at this. So beautiful. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this about me, but beyond cooking and writing, I'm also a food stylist. So this was the perfect shoot for me. Yeah. <laughs> because it was food that I was familiar with. And so it was, it felt very natural. Um, and I loved working with you on set uh, doing this shoot. It was so much fun. It was literally so much fun. It was like an all like Asian like crew. Um, and Which think, is pretty rare, yeah, I would say. Yeah, no, I'm so, it's so surprising. Cause I was like, we just had such a good, easy time. Um, and all the recipes, like I personally doing this story, like I didn't make any of these recipes. These are like recipes from friends I reached out to who are also- are. It's me. It's uh, um, <laughs> dipping pond salt and hot cocoa that Jen made for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, like each recipe that is kind of like a vegan-ish take on like the flavors of basically just like having ensaimada, but it's more cakey. I remember eating this on set, um, but it's so good. I think it's mm -hmm. just like, 
again, like there's so much that my friend Christy Drutman made this recipe. Um, and all the people that I asked are not necessarily like full-time people in food. Like, yeah, Christy I thought that is, was cool. Yeah, I know. She's like an environmentalist. She is behind like Brown Girl Green. She does amazing work there. Um, there's another recipe that you also made, which was like, uh, I was like, now we're just going to, oh, we're yeah. just going to go through the whole thing. I know. Thing. This is Gretchen Carvajal's Salog plate. So Gretchen is the founder of Brown Girls, which is like one of my favorite like jewelry earring companies. Um, and so sh her family has this whole thing where it's like homemade longanisa, um, also like pandasol basically like with like a nice French toast and like, condensed milk on top. My God. And like I a synagogue. <laughs> so like, that's like, I'm, my mouth is watering looking at this too. I know when the recipe said, put the whole thing of evaporated milk in the bowl. I was like, oh my God, I know. this bread is going to soak up all this sweetness. It's crazy. And it turned out so good. I really, I loved all those recipes and it tasted, yeah, amazing all together. Yeah. So good. Oh my um, gosh. And oh, and this one. This one, yeah. This is, last but not least, this is actually from my Otta Molly. So Molly Crost is actually like a playwright based in Seattle. Whoa. Um, and we met through Berkeley. And so like we're very close because there was like a whole At Kuya Ate Ading program in Berkeley where you just like get matched and you make like a family together. Um, so she is my big technically. Um, and so she made this like really cool like matzo brai. Uh, recipe with achara so oh, much, right, right. yeah so this is like more of her combination of filipino jewish fusion because this is her background um but yeah, it's like tapa beef tapa mm -hmm. um and then also just like mixed in with like the matzah and egg and also like the achara is like a nice like acidic yeah. oh. tart delicious like side condiment Look, there's my little food stylist credit right yeah, there. <laughs> honestly, so good. And, like, it was a seamless day. Like, we shot all this in a day, and it all turned out, like... It was so, so much fun. Oh, my God. We had so many leftovers. We didn't even I know, right? Them, so all right. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing my screen. No. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's so great to... <laughs> oh, see, so look. I'm getting hungry again. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm already so hungry. It's, like, not okay. I feel, like, deliriously hungry. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, my computer is not all the way plugged in. Sorry, I'm gonna lean over and oh, plug my computer in. Oh you my god, amateur hour. Do what you gotta do, Jen. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Oh my god. You're gosh. fine. You're fine. Uh, but, uh, Abby, this has been so cool to get to know your book and oh, I, getting a preview ahead of everyone else. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Everyone get your copy on the 28th of February, but um, but no, I'm excited to have talked about it even with you, Jen, who you've seen, <laughs> I feel like you've already probably seen like the e-galley for it, but it'll be fun for you to like hold it. and. To yeah. See it in there, so. You were talking about getting your box of books and uh, the smell. The smell. Oh yeah. Sorry. We're talking <laughs> this off camera. But it's like, it's like cracking this open here. It's like, like you just like sniff New it. book smell. It's, it's kind of like, like a, like a baby. Like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. My, my, I have a niece who's like a baby and uh, my parents love smelling her feet. Her head. Um, or and feet. the head. <laughs> and the feet. And the head. But like, they just, babies smell really good. And like new books smell really good. And when you write a book, it does feel like you made like a baby, honestly, doing this. So, Truly. Like, yes. It really does. It's true. Um, yeah, Diego agrees. Yeah, new book smell is mad good. <laughs> mad oh, good. Man of taste. <laughs> oh, see, like, new book smell, top tier smell. It is. Death. And, like, opening it, it's just, like, crack. And it's just, like, <laughs> very, it literally is, like, a sound. And it's very visceral. Yeah, so when visceral. you when you bend the spine for the first time, it's just, like, got that very specific crack. Yeah, yeah like, ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. True. <laughs> dreams so many dreams with books and yeah. uh talking to you more about it makes me excited for working on my upcoming books like i have a few that are coming out this year and a few next year um i didn't write them but <laughs> i was part of the crew um i think the one that i can talk about is islas which is going to be out in august Ooh. it is by von diaz she's a puerto rican author and she took on this massive undertaking. She basically uh, tried to compile recipes from colonized island nations. 
Oh my God. <laughs> it is, it's incredible. It's political. It's amazing. It's wow. delicious. Um, and she really highlighted countries um, that no one really knows anything about their cooking mm -hmm. or at least here in the United States, we don't know much about their cooking. Yeah. And so it's going to be like so eye opening mm -hmm. to like, oh, the food of Mauritius. The food of Curacao, the, the food of, you know, all these islands. And of course, the Philippines is in there. <laughs> wow, I'm so hyped for that. I'm really going like, to oh, go yeah. in and buy it. For sure. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, but yeah, books are amazing. And I know that it's like such an old school process. Like publishing still feels very old <laughs> yeah there's a lot of like tradition that is upheld with books and there's no other experience like it no. but i think there is room for the publishing industry to grow as you also probably <laughs> think. i don't know i 100 percent agree yeah <laughs> like that's it's just like the way that like you know we were talking about music and we we're talking about like all creative industries it seems like the floor is like the seal like the salary ceiling mm. and floor is just so low um, that like everyone should have higher pay, especially yes. in these like very grueling industries where you're working overtime, all these hours that you're not necessarily compensated for. And so like, that's why like every day I'm like very grateful for the people that worked with me on this book. Um, and they're the ones who made this happen. Yeah. Um, even though it's a big corporation at the, like, you know, who's backing the money for it, I guess. But like, <laughs> I'm really grateful for the actual like people at a harvest and my publisher who did this and you know, they believed in me from the start. And I think that having people who are also women and also like some people are people of color, like all that stuff makes a difference when you're writing and you're you really die. like stressed about all these things. But like, if you don't have to worry about like your identity of, in, of your book getting lost, then you feel really safe and you can write whatever. So oh, I'm that's really so glad. I know I felt really good <laughs> writing with my team. Like my, my editor was who's also Asian American is just like, Sarah is amazing at what she does. And yeah, I talk about it a lot recently, just like interviews, but she really made me feel like my ideas were very valid. And like, my oh. like, and it's so hard. Cause you know, like you're always like, people are like, oh, like you get nervous about entering publishing. Cause it is such an old school industry and very, very white at the top. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. a lot of men at the top. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, because it's actually a lot more women who work in publishing, but obviously they're not at the head of the top. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but no, it was very, like, very much like, don't whitewash our recipes, like, don't feel the need to do that ever. So I feel very grateful for, for her. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Shout out, Sarah. Oh, my God. That's so beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Um, and for folks who want to, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. No, you're fine. Um, I think it's really great that you mention a lot of the conflict when it comes to people of color trying to tell their stories and mm -hmm. one resource that i think people should know about is equity at the table do you know that no oh so it's uh equity at the table.com and it's a database of all poc uh publishing industry people wow. um and chefs so people who are in hiring positions can look and diversify their pools Wait, that's so cool. It's really cool. cool. Yeah, Hold it on. was it was founded by Julia Tertian, who is mm -hmm. a fellow author um, and recipe developer. And she, I don't know, you know, she was tired of seeing the same people getting book deals mm -hmm. and uh, seeing the same people getting hired for stuff who were not sharing the load. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what the website is for. Uh, folks can submit themselves to it. Uh, and you can also look for freelancers, look for people to hire. Like if you're looking for caterers, if you're looking for chefs, you're looking for writers, photographers, food stylists, anything in the food creative industry, you can mm -hmm. find somebody there. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, you should, add, you should add yourself to it. I, I now I'm like, oh God, I haven't done it yet. Oh, <laughs> On your to-do list, yes, add yourself to the database because oh uh, it's awesome. And I've gotten work from it. Like, uh, I yeah, I love I love getting um, inquiries from that website. So awesome. it's great. Yeah, yeah, great. highly highly recommend. Oh my god. Okay. No, <laughs> don't have to say. Don't tell me twice. I got it. <laughs> um, Abby, how do you feel about playing a little game? 
with I'm me in ready. the chat. You're ready? I love a good game. You love a game. Yes. I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna change up our music a little bit just to, we've been playing Cozy Snail. Oh. We're gonna, we're gonna go to uh, Splash. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's a little more wavy. Eh. Um, all right, folks. Uh, some of you have done this before with me, but if you haven't, let's pretend we're on Chopped. Woo. Uh, yeah. So if you don't know this TV show, there is this basket with four mystery ingredients in it, and chefs have to make that, like, use them to make a dish. So there's no wrong answers, and the purpose of the exercise is to think about how far the ingredients can go, and maybe inspire your next meal so let's go chat um the first four ingredients that you shout out will be the ones that we use um i'll go through the ingredients individually and help you figure out like how to use it but just start feeling free to tell us how you'd combine like two three or all four of the ingredients and imagine that you have like that food network kitchen you know imagine that you had that big ass kitchen kitchen stadium from iron yeah. imagine you have all the tools and the time that you need um, but what would you make, like, if the sky was the limit? All right. Um, so we'll wait for chat to catch up and give us some ingredients. But Abby, do you want to volunteer one ingredient? Oh, one ingredient? Okay, I would say let's do some jackfruit. Jackfruit! All right, yes. jackfruit number one. Ocho Robo says Pringles. Any <gasps> flavor. <laughs> oh my god, it's like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh man, let's um let's just quickly explain jackfruit to people. Um, so I guess should I said sweet jackfruit or green jack. I should have said. You do uh, both. We okay, do okay, both. we give everyone we give each other options here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so jackfruit is commonly used in South and South East Southeast Asian cuisines. Um, both ripe and unripe fruits are consumed. So, uh, the green one are the unripe. And the ripe is the yellow one, right? I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And they are available canned in like a sweet, simple syrup. Mm -hmm. um, they can be frozen. But what I've seen lately, the way people have been using it is as like a vegan substitute. Yeah, like a vegan pulled meat substitute. pork. Vibe. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a fruit, but it can very much take the place of a protein in the vegan sense. So mm -hmm. uh, if y'all have never cooked with that before, um, that's how you could use it. Yeah. Um, Pringles. <laughs> Is it just these two ingredients? I don't know. <laughs> no. We That's can be creative. You can add stuff. Remember, you have the full Food Network kitchen. What about, wait, Jen, would you want to volunteer an ingredient so we have three? Um, yes. Let's say brisket. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. We got brisket, we got Pringles, and we got jackfruit so far. Uh -huh. Oh, if someone cool. wants to shout out a fourth ingredient, we'll happily incorporate it. Mm -hmm. But brisket is a cut of meat that um, is tougher on the tougher side. It's mm -hmm. usually sold in large portion. And uh, it's kind of, it benefits from a low and slow cooking. So that's why you'll see it at a lot of barbecue restaurants. Mm -hmm. So it has a skinny end or a thin end and a really fatty end, which has the fat cap. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the way that you would cook this is... Uh, it's simple. A salt and pepper rub, and then you smoke it for however many hours, and the fat cap melts and marinates the meat as it cooks, which mm. is really special. That's why brisket is so good. Oh, Diego, Dandy in the Bronx says eggs, of uh, course. Eggs. Oh my God. Eggs. It's really All right. threw me off. Right. All right, folks. Okay, so we got four ingredients <laughs> we got eggs, mm -hmm. Pringles, any flavor, <laughs> jackfruit. The ripe or unripe, whichever one you want to use, and brisket. Love what that. What would you do? What would you do? No pressure. Do you go first, Jen, or me? No, this is just like a uh, everybody shout out what you oh. what you think. It. If you get inspired, say it. Okay. But if you don't have an idea quite yet, don't worry. Yeah, I do feel like because of brisket, we're talking about barbecue. I do feel like that. I feel like brisket is obviously the main. Um, and then I would maybe like crust it in like a Pringles <gasps> situation. Hell yeah. So, yeah. and then also like the actual, I would use sweet jackfruit as like a chutney Ooh. or something with something, with some tomato, whatever, something to like Ooh, add a little bit jack of sweetness. Jackfruit chutney, nice. And then just like an egg on top and like a taco or something. I don't you know. Gotta, oh wait, put an egg on it, you know. Put, a, put an egg on egg it. On I know, it. I feel like I didn't give the egg enough justice, but in my head, that was what was kind of making sense. <laughs> what if... 
okay, so what if uh, we smoke the brisket, okay. we, we pull it, we make it into threads and dry that out? Okay. So you have more of like a biltong, like a dried jerky beef oh, okay. situation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. What if we made deviled eggs? Why? Okay, with I can the, see with that. With the the brisket biltong on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some like Pringle And topping. Pringle crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And are we like cooking the jackfruit, I guess, like into... Or is the jackfruit itself just cooked We could the... use maybe... A sauce? The canned liquid from the jackfruit to make the deviled egg part. Oh, yeah, because it's a little <laughs> bit sweet. That's it's true. It's a little bit sweet. Also, that liquid has a lot of jackfruit flavor. Yeah. Like, when you're eating it, like, you know that it's like a jackfruit can of mm -hmm. whatever, preserved fruit. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, okay, so people who are just joining us, we are trying to figure out how to cook <laughs> imaginary, imaginary, like, you know, how would you cook eggs, Pringles of any flavor, mm -hmm. brisket, and jackfruit? Honestly, controversial, but this is more about Pringles. I love yeah. pe pizza Pringles. Do you like oh, the pizza flavor? I don't think I've had it. Is it the white can? Yeah. It, oh, I've never had it. I don't it's think. It kind of has like a tomatoey dust on it. That's like a little cheesy. What? I, I love it. Like I, that was like my favorite Pringle growing up. I don't know. Weird. <laughs> Interesting. What if we did like Barbecue? brisket, brisket nuggets with oh. the pizza flavor? Uh huh. And then slip in a little mozzarella. <laughs> Oh, I could see that. That's the brisket pizza nugget. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I feel like we could also probably make a ketchup or something. Oh, yeah. Or marinara or I don't know, something with a jackfruit, maybe? Interesting. Um, what else? Okay, so what do you use jackfruit normally for? Like, what is your first thing that comes to mind that you make jackfruit with? I think the biggest, most famous Filipino dessert that maybe uses it is Turon. So it's like that lumpia wrapped, but like saba banana, then with like jackfruit. jackfruit, and then you put some sugar, and then you roll it up, and you fry it, and you cover it with more sugar. Um, and there's like a, I have this like a recipe in the book that's like a caramelized like a banana and jackfruit jam. So it has like the Ooh. flavors of taron, but like not so like making the taron itself, but. Excuse yeah. me, why don't we just have that with a brisket <laughs> sandwich? Honestly, I love that. Like a good, like, it's very, it has such caramel notes. I think Ooh, it would taste good with it. Oh my God. And what if we did the salt and vinegar Pringles in the sandwich for crunch? Salt, oh my God. I do love salt and vinegar. Yeah, me That's too. Like, right? <laughs> <laughs> so good. I would wow. eat that for sure. Wow. Okay. What else? We haven't done a drink yet. A drink? A drink. <laughs> I know, it sounds crazy, but how could you make a drink with brisket, egg, jackfruit, and Pringles? No, so who, how are people making, um, like, do you think people would use, like, the green jackfruit, like, the the unripe one for something, like, a savory? Like a pickle? Maybe? <gasps> okay, wait. What I feel if like we, we should utilize that. What if we fat wash some whiskey? Okay. Fat washed whiskey. So we use the brisket fat to wash some whiskey, uh -huh. strain that. We make, uh, I don't know, like a, 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 a highball. So it's like oh. whiskey, uh, the, the brisket whiskey mm -hmm. with a uh, seltzer and then like a pickled jackfruit, like garnish. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. You could have the Pringle as a snack. I don't like a soggy Pringle. I don't think that you like... You just hey, have the Pringles. <laughs> Pringles just to snack on while you're drinking. Just on the, the side. side, yeah. I think that's like exactly right. Like you don't want to put Pringle in the cocktail. No, not in a no, cocktail. No, no way. No. It's... What? If, oh, wait. Okay, no. Step further. What if we made jackfruit salsa with the unripe jackfruit? Oh, okay. And then use the Pringles as the chip. Oh, I see you. I see you. Mm. Are we so? How are we using the brisket though? I don't know. You don't have to use every ingredient. Oh, we don't. In oh. this game, in this game, it's two, three, or all four if you want. Oh my god, I feel like that would be good because like we would be instantly eliminated if we didn't use. All <laughs> It'd be over for. Us. This is my game. My game is easier. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, and I, love, I feel like eggs and that's why I think a lot of the texture of. The unripe, even ripe jackfruit is so stringy. 
That's probably mm. why people use those like pulled pork alternatives and yeah. stuff because it has that similar texture. I don't know. Yeah. But I love oh. it. What if we did like a jackfruit ceviche? Oh, well, people are not thinking the way that you're thinking. <laughs> I'm just saying, what if? What if? <laughs> no, you don't, no, no, no. I can see that. And you're using <laughs> the Pringles as like, you know how some people, I recently went to Siaz and Charlie. That's like the Korean um, Southern fusion restaurant. Oh, I haven't been there. Um, oh. And it was fun. It was a fun time. But they had like a tuna ceviche situation, but they use like shrimp chips as like the <gasps> vessel. Dope. Um, but like I swear, I swear I could use like Pringles as like the oh yeah vessel as well. Here. Yeah, the sour cream and onion ones. Oh, okay, I like that one. There you oh, go. Good. There you that go. That's really good. Um, what else? Uh, we haven't. Oh, oh, there are shrimp flavored Pringles. You're, I didn't know that. Me neither. What? That sounds so good. Where are you getting your Pringles? <laughs> I know. I have not seen those Pringles. What? <laughs> Drop the link. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What? <laughs> Yo, actually, yeah, like jackfruit ceviche with the shrimp Pringles. That yeah. sounds bomb. That sounds crazy. We don't have you seen that there's actually like, sweet Pringles now? What? There's like, I swear I saw this like cinnamon Pringles or something, something like they're really going a different direction lately. Oh, I don't know. Well, when you were in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Australia would have the good stuff. I, I see, know. I see. The hell? Um, so let's say there were some sweet Pringles. Mm -hmm. What would we do here? Like a dessert with all these things? Uh-huh. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, not all the things. You don't have to use all the things. The brisket. <laughs> well, the brisket's really throwing you off. No, I know. That's like the, the one thing. That's like the monkey wrench and everything. No, I feel like... What's it called? I often really love putting, um, using anything dried like chips or crackers as like cheesecake crust. Ooh. And so I feel like you could definitely make any kind of like crust for like a, some type of jackfruit cheesecake or something <gasps> with the Pringles. Oh my God. The original yeah. Pringles or yeah. a sweet Pringle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheesecake crust. Yeah. Jackfruit cheesecake. That sounds so good. I know. And then maybe even if you want to go a little bit savory, we could use like the dried brisket that you were talking about earlier and have that as like a topping with maybe like wow. something. Like, I don't know. We'll see. You know, we use the eggs to make a meringue too. Oh, we need the eggs and the cheesecake. Yeah. And the meringue. We there you go. We yeah. have used every single ingredient in the dessert. Boom. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us go. Look at us go. Um, what if we could maybe pulverize the Pringles and rehydrate them? Oh, because it's mash? basically yeah, it's basically potato. Like it's really dry potato, so it doesn't uh -huh. have any volume. Mm -hmm. But we'll whip some ricotta there, make some gnocchi, mm -hmm. Pringle okay. gnocchi. I'm seeing the vision I'm with the brisket. It. Like, oh my god. Stroganoffy style. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I feel I thought you're also gonna go because I've seen this on TikTok where people like um rehydrate like chips and make them into mashed potatoes mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. could also do a bed of mashed potatoes. Yeah. Whatever you want with Pringles. Okay. Yeah. I feel like Emmy made right now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what stuff she would probably do. <laughs> there was an article in Serious Eats. Um like a shortcut Spanish tortilla. Oh. So if you um, mix, if you beat some eggs and then toss in potato chips, you can layer them meticulously and fry that into a Spanish tortilla. What? So we could I... do that with Pringles. Wait, that's so cool. It's crazy. Wow. No, I don't think people are using Pringles as much as you would think. No. You know, like there's not a lot of <laughs> Pringle love out there. Um, wasn't there, isn't there a new, like, Netflix show about, like, food science? Or, like, what's, it, what's it called? I, ah, what's it called? It's, like, trying to recreate Pringles and, like, other fast food, like, other, um, snack foods. Oh. Ah, what was it called? It's, like, was it, like, Gourmet Make style? Like, the way that, like, the Bon Appetit mm. series was? Or, um, no, let me see. My friend Hari is the host of it, so oh. it's. Uh, 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 where, where is this thing? Oh, this is not updated. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Look at his, uh, IMDb. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at his IMDb. Where? Uh, and it's called Snack versus Chef. 
Oh, okay. I've yeah, it's a before. it's a new Netflix show where all of these chefs are trying to recreate, um, you know, really famous things like Oreos, Twix, mm -hmm. uh, and one episode was Pringles, and the episode was all about like um, functional foods mm -hmm. because Pringles are specifically shaped to fit in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And they stack well, like it's very convenient. So the next challenge after recreating the Pringles was to make something that was functional. Like an edible food that had like another use or purpose or convenience. Like what other utility would that? Well, I guess like it doesn't have to, like, is it actually like structural? In, in some terms? some of them were like uh, building blocks, like Lego, edible Lego or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's an interesting show. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. Mm hmm Ha! <laughs> Jen, you need to work for Pringles marketing. I would buy Pringle gnocchi. That does sound good. I feel like I feel like Cheetos has been really like leaning into like mac and cheese and stuff, but I oh, do yeah. think like there's it's like, maybe sometimes like too much where I feel like <laughs> Pringle gnocchi. I would like oh that sounds a little fancy. I don't know. yeah, it sounds so fancy, y'all. You would not believe how easy it is to make gnocchi. It is basically mashed potatoes with more flour. You should just make this on live next time. I should. Time. Just, <laughs> just to show, just to prove a point. Yeah, I don't you... have a guest next week, so yeah, maybe you should do it. <laughs> yeah. I, <love> that. <laughs> I really do like that. That's so <laughs> funny. Uh, all right. Well, we are in the final minutes of the show. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you are just joining us, let us know how would you combine eggs, brisket, jackfruit, and what was the last thing? Eggs, jackfruit, and brisket, eggs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like going through Pringles, Pringles, Pringles of any Pringles. flavor. Yes. The How could I forget star. the Pringles? We were like, just talking about I know. I thought I was like, I thought we mentioned it, but I guess we did it. Um, but if you and the audience are not a on the go thinker, you can just tweet this to me later. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you, you get really an idea, because I always love hearing what you're thinking about this. Um, but Abby, it has been so much fun fun hanging out with you today on the stream it has um, been much fun can you tell folks how to follow you online yeah so you can follow me at the dusky kitchen d-u-s-k-y um on twitter instagram also you can find the link to pre-order my book mayumu on my website theduskykitchen.com um, so please check it out please follow um, i will definitely be posting all about the events promoting the book um, so please check that out. Thank you. So yeah, much for and don't in. don't miss the good fits. Like Abby has I some try. spectacular fits, and her hair usually matches True. whatever it is you're working on. Yeah, right now. I do love to like. I'll, maybe I'm not Diego's level, but like maybe just like a little. <laughs> it's it's fun to dress up, and it's fun to like. I don't know. Just do do whatever you want, and I think that's like fun with food and also fashion so yeah. i know right yeah. um i have a few upcoming guests i'm gonna tell the folks here upcoming guests oh my gosh we have teresa finney <gasps> do you know teresa? i love teresa at heart pedateria yeah. <laughs> she is a baker based in atlanta georgia she's going to talk to us about patreon like the perils of using patreon mm -hmm. because i have a lot to say about that as well mm -hmm. and the concept of a micro bakery which is what uh, her business is uh, and Abby I feel like you also kind of did a micro bake a quarterly micro bakery <laughs> yes no I respect what Teresa does and she makes the most beautiful conchas and everything I so know. to do bread on that kind of scale at home is hard and I it's really hard. have a lot of respect for her so like yeah love yeah. her can't wait to tune in to the next yeah episode. we're gonna talk to her all about that and then yeah. also oh wait sorry so Teresa will be on the 22nd mm -hmm. and then on March 1st we have my friend Didi Paterno Magpali who is all fellow uh, Filipino writer and she's based in Texas so we're gonna talk about how does she discover new restaurants and food in Texas uh you know being from uh from the Philippines and then moving to Dubai and like all these different places. Oh. And so she has a knack for finding really good food. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Yeah, folks. So uh, we're going to be here on Attack the Pantry every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please support my guests. Check out all the links on the about page here on the channel. Um, follow Abby. I'm going to put it on the screen one more time. Woo, woo, woo. Support Abby. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you have any uh, final words for our audience, Abby? Um, no, I just want to say thank you, Salama. And um, I hope to see you at any of these events if you're in New York or just yeah. I want you to hopefully c pick up the book and make some recipes. It'd be so great to see what you make. Cool. Abby, thank you so much for being here. And folks, we're going to uh, try to raid another channel. So Abby, stick around. Okay. I'm going to take us off the screen and then I'll say goodbye to you formally after. Okay, okay. Here. But I'm going to go set up the raid really quick. Um, but thanks everybody for hanging out with us and we appreciate you. See you next week here on Attack the Pantry. Bye. Bye.